top by my clock. It's time for the DLCM Home Hey, family, it's Pastor Mac. Listen, today is Sunday, and it is Father's Day, and I want to say happy Father's Day to every father. I want you to know there is power in you showing up, you being present in your son's life. What a great responsibility it is to be a father. We know that it is a great responsibility just from following uh, our Father God who showed up at Jesus' baptism just to approve his son and confirm who he was. And there is power in you being present in your son's life, in your daughter's life. There's power in showing up. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think that today is going to be amazing. It's going to bless your life. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to hit that share button because you sharing this could change someone's life. Whether you're at Deeper Life, Church Ministries, Goldsboro, or MMCC Raleigh, we know we are combined this month as one church because we are focusing on city impact cultivating a passion to impact our city so thank you so much for tuning in thank you for hitting share thank you for liking thank you for commenting let's have church today now listen dlcm family i want you to do me a favor join us back here at 12 noon today 12 noon today for a father's day special 12 noon today join us as a matter of fact mmcc raleigh i want you to join us too because i think it's going to be something amazing that you're going to appreciate so join us here right here uh, on our page deeper life church ministries at 12 noon all right let's have church god bless make confession i am above only i'm not the lender, not the borrower. I'm blessed when I come, blessed when I go, blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the fields. Do me a favor, find someone beside you in your living room with you, in your kitchen, and just tell them, say neighbor, or scream at them, say neighbor, I am blessed. Everybody say bless, 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 bless.
doors. God decided to open said door. So find someone close to you that seems to be discouraged and just tell them, say, neighbor, say, it's going to work. Black man. Dear black man. Dear black man. Dear black man. You know that the world um, wants to portray you to be a certain thing, but I see you. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are valued. You are a king. You are someone's love, someone's light. You are a friend, a lover, a father. I see you guys out there being providers. I see you being loving. Young men like my son could look at you and say, if he did it, I could do it. Your past does not have to define your future. The struggle is there, but at the same time, we believe in you. I'm sorry that the world sees you sometimes as a scary person. You're not scary. You're someone's son, you're someone's husband, and I truly love you. You can do it, I value you. Don't let nothing stop you, because young men are looking up to you. You are very necessary. Never forget that because we need you. I will always be here, forever, as your queen.
Impact Consulting Group is partnering with Deeper Life Church Ministries to bring to Goldsboro and surrounding areas an amazing conference for pastors and secondary leaders. It's Fuel 2020. In-house edition happening November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Fuel 2020 sessions include Flow for the Love of Worship Turn Their Church Upside Down Church Full of Crazy People Ultimate Weightlifter Marketing Outreach and Evangelism Let's Handle Business Leadership Series and I Am Abishai Fuel 2020 Fuel 2020 presenters include Jeremiah Davis Aaron and Ashley McNair Sherman Blandon Justin Marshall Rashawn Wilson and Aaron McNair Sr. Don't miss Fuel 2020 in-house edition November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Registration begins June 28th, so register now at www.GodFuel2020.com Fuel 2020 Deep fam, we are in the last stretch. It is almost time to return to the gathering of the saints. Now is the time to evaluate your DLCM report card. How many people did you evangelize to during this time? How many did you invite to connect with DLCM? Have you prayed for your leadership in the deep family? Have you remained faithful in tithing and seed sowing? Pastor Mac's June sermon series is sure to change our perspective of being the church. City Impact, cultivating a passion to impact our city. Share the publications and live streams on social media. DLCM is launching several outreach projects during this pandemic to show our city that we love and care for it. We need you to get involved. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Put your hands to work and let's make an impact. Now stay tuned to hear an amazing word from our pastor, Dr. Aaron McNair II. Hey family, here we are again in the city because we are focusing this month on city impact, cultivate a passion to impact our city. And here we are with week three in our sermon series. And I want to talk from the subject today, reclaiming our city reclaiming our city. Isaiah 26 is one, and 1 is where our scripture will come from. And so let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, for the many blessings that you have given us, for allowing us to hear from you, to hear your heart. Speak to us, God. Speak through lips of clay that we may hear your voice and then follow your will. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 1 says, we have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. So we're going to talk today from the subject, reclaiming our city. My prayer is uh, that this series hits the ears of my fellow pastors in the city of Raleigh and Goldsboro, as it is my endeavor to encourage the body of Christ to work together as one church. I, I really believe that it is the will of God uh, that we bring all of our influ influences together and accomplish the will of God as one church. Unity in the body of Christ is the answer to changing our cities and bringing salvation into a region. Most cities worldwide are filled with violence, drugs, gangs, prostitution, poverty, and perversion. But this is not God's intention for these cities. And yet God works through faith. I hope you got that. Let me say it again. God works through faith. Therefore, we must ask ourselves, what do we expect God to do for our cities? Is our vision too small? Is our vision too big? God will understand this. God will be to us only as big as we have the faith and expect him in time and space. We must begin to claim biblical promises and preach biblical hope if we are to expect biblical results. 
The city will be effectively influenced by the power of the gospel because the city is people and people can be and will be reached either by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan. So our strategy must be one birth in the spiritual realm and implemented strategically by spiritual means. Natural carnal means will not accomplish spiritual ends. Let me say that again. Natural carnal means will not accomplish spiritual ends. We must reach our cities by understanding the spiritual realm. First the spiritual, then the natural. First we take our territory by spiritual invasion, then through natural channels. As this happens, the transformed church begins to think and function as the New Testament church. The transformed homes begin to think like and function like homes with a purpose, reaching every person with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the first steps, one of the first steps to establishing a city reaching church atmosphere is to establish a prayer intercession priority in the church. Let me back up and say that again. One of the first steps to establishing a city reaching church atmosphere is to establish a prayer intercession priority in the church, in every believer and ultimately in the whole city church. But before we get into one of the first steps, let's discuss the first step. That is understanding the privilege of prayer. I, I love I love to bring this to the forefront whenever I'm teaching on prayer, lest we forget how much of a privilege prayer is. One writer says that prayer is one of the most precious gifts of God to man. During the lifetime of Jesus, the Holy Temple of Jerusalem was the center of Jewish religious life. The temple was the place where animal sacrifices were carried out and worship according to the law of Moses was followed faithfully. Hear me. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 through 9 tells us that the temple in the temple was a veil that separated the holy of holies, the earthly dwelling place of God's presence from the rest of the temple where men dwelt. This signified that man was separated from God by sin. Let me back up because I need need you to really get this today. There's a veil in the temple that separated the holy of holies from the rest of the temple where men dwelt, which signified that man was separated from God by sin. Only the high priest was permitted to pass beyond this veil once each year, according to Exodus 30 and 10, Hebrews 9 and 7, to enter into God's presence for all of Israel and make atonement for their sins, Leviticus 16. In the day of the high priest, uh, he was the one who interceded, went to God on your behalf. Watch this. Solomon's temple was 30 cubits high. 1 Kings 6 and 2. But Herod had increased the height in f by 40 cubits to 40 cubits, according to the writings of Josephus, who was a first century Jewish historian. There is uncertainty as to the exact measurement of a cubit, uh, but it is safe to assume that the veil was somewhere near 60 feet high. Josephus also tells us that the veil was four inches thick and that horses tied to each side could not pull the veil apart. The book of Exodus teaches that this thick veil was fashioned from blue, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. The size and the thickness of the veil makes the events occurring at the moment of Jesus' death even the more uh, amazing. Matthew 27, 50 through 51, Jesus, the Bible says, when he cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil and the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks went. The tearing of the veil at the moment of Jesus' death dramatically symbolized that his sacrifice, Lord have mercy, the shedding of his blood was the sufficient, sufficient atonement. It was compensation. It was enough apology for sins. It signified that now the way into the Holy of Holies was open to all people for all time, both Jew and Gentile. Jesus paid the price, Lord have mercy, for the veil to be ripped from the top to the bottom.
Adam so that we don't have to go or have a high priest to go to God to talk for us, but we can go to him for ourselves. Lord, have mercy. We don't have to sit in a booth and confess our sins to an earthly priest called Father, but we can go to the Father. Ooh, that's why the songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. It is a privilege to talk to Jesus. I almost needed an organ right there, but I need you to type in the text box. It's a privilege to talk to Jesus. It is a privilege to talk to him. Prayer, prayer intercession for the city will grow out of prayer spirit that is nurtured and strengthened continually within each local congregation. Now, to think that we have any chance at all to touch our cities without becoming powerful in prayer is absolutely ridiculous. Our prayer power will be the power that breaks down the spiritual strongholds in our churches then in our cities. We will not be spiritually able to secure the borders of our cities until we secure the borders of our own congregations. I hope you got it. If you didn't get it, let me back we will not be spiritually able to secure the borders of our city until we secure the borders of our own congregations. The power for spiritually penetrating the darkness in our cities is the power of intercessory prayer. Now, I don't want you to miss the fact that have mercy, personal prayer, your personal prayer life is essential. Before we go to war, with principles on how to discipline and personally touch God through prayer. Prayer in mind that have been softened and playing with the word of God. Breaking up the soil, the soil of our hearts refers to personal commitment to confession and repentance. A strong hindrance of prayer, understand, is fallow ground. Mm -hmm. You see, the condition of our hearts determines our growth, our fruitfulness, and our destinies in God. Even as there are different conditions of physical soil, so there are different heart conditions that must be discerned in order to bring forth great fruitfulness in the spiritual realm. We live now of God. Can you catch that? We live in the glorious now of God. The whole of time is God's arena to work on behalf of and through his faithful ones. He desires that his people be mighty in prayer, experienced in getting answers to prayer, and undisturbed by the most complex and long-standing needs. It is sincerely time to seek the Lord. I, I hope you got that. I need you to type that seeking prayer. Type seeking prayer because seeking prayer is an earnest, continual perseverance birthed from a deep hunger and drive. Oh yes, seeking prayer is a prayer that is Holy Spirit initiated through intercession, uh, finds God's will and God's answers. In, in seeking prayer, in seeking prayer, there is a component that we cannot overlook or ignore and it is the word till. Woo! Lord have mercy. T-I-L-L. -L. I need you to type till. Till. Many prayers are granted by God, but given up by the ones praying because they stopped praying before the answer came. Huh? Oh yes, you got to understand that without dynamic, uh, the dynamic of persistence, much prayer will remain unanswered. But when we understand how to be persistent in our prayer, he comes. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Did you get that? I said he comes. Uh, oh yeah, he is coming. I need you to type that. He is coming. If we were in church, I would tell you, hit three people and tell them he will show up. Oh yes. When we are persistent in our prayer, he will show up. And when he comes, he's bringing an answer with him. He, he will rain righteousness on you as the scripture declares. The reign of God is symbolic of God's favor, God's blessing, God's strength, and God's prosperity. It is prayer that both releases the reign of God and allows us to receive the reign of God. Prayer, 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 
is so vital, and I, I'm coming to a close prayer, is so vital to preparing a city-reaching church. Prayer is vital to all God's people for the advancement of the kingdom. All the congregations must become skilled. Oh yes, all congregations must become skilled if we are to spiritually change the climate of our city. God desires all of us to be mighty in prayer, experience in preserving answered prayer, and unmoved in preserving in the most complex and long-standing needs. As we can see from the following verses, catch this, when this holy, fervent flame of prayer is lit, the soul awakens the interest of heaven, attracts the attention of God, and places at the disposal of those who exercise it the exhaustless riches of grace. Lord have mercy. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to 141 and 2 says let my prayer be set before you as an incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice you got to understand this and then we're coming to a close I want to close with prayer if you don't mind the prayer anointing is absolutely essential to reaching our cities and tearing down spiritual strongholds piercing the darkness and setting the captive free I'm gonna run back and say this one more time the absolutely essential in reaching our cities by tearing down spiritual stronghold, piercing the darkness and setting the captives free. That's why intercession has to be the foundation of our church. For both locations, uh, whether you are at MMCC Raleigh, so hear me, intercessor Imani uh, Tyson and April Flo, hear me in Goldsboro, Elder Brenda Ward, we have to stand in the gap for our cities. We have to stand in the gap for our cities. And in order for us to stand in the gap for our cities, we have to pray for, uh, we have to pray for forgiveness because repentance is that first step. Oh Lord, have mercy. If we're going to stand in the gap between our city and our God, we have to intercede. We have to repent on behalf of our city. So, so let's pray. We ask Lord Jesus that you forgive us for the sins that have taken place in our city and our region. We ask for forgiveness for the sins of political corruption and racial prejudice, moral perversions, witchcraft, the occult and idolatry. We pray for the blood of Jesus to cleanse our hands from shedding innocent blood through abortions, in an innocent blood through murders and innocent blood through other kinds of destruction to humanity. We ask for forgiveness for divisions in the church, for spiritual pride, for backbiting, for anything that hurts the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We repent. We humble ourselves. We ask for mercy to be poured upon our land, our community, our city, and our churches. We ask God for your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus for your spiritual outpouring, spiritual outpouring of your grace, spiritual outpouring of your mercy and your fire upon our city we ask for true spiritual revival to come into our community causing a turning to God a cleansing a brokenness a humility a hunger for the one and true living God we ask that our destiny not be aborted in the name of Jesus we ask God that you visit our city visit our churches visit our homes in the name of Jesus do not pass our city by do not pass our city by we ask for restoration and the foundations of righteousness to our city we pray now God in the name of Jesus for pastors that they be not weary in well-doing that they may reap if they faint not in the name of Jesus, we speak a blood covering over every pastor. Protect their mind, protect their health. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke suicide over pastors now. In the name of Jesus, then God touch the leaders of the church who will help carry the wood, who will help carry the weight of ministry. In the name of Jesus, that they will not get sidetracked, but we will remain focused in secondary leadership that we may help push the vision forward. In the name of Jesus, touch every leader in every church in the name of Jesus and then God 
touch churches as a whole in the name of Jesus that we will push your will to come to pass that we will push your vision to come to pass that we will become a light in our city in the name of Jesus look in the churches and touch the gifted those who have gifts on the inside God we speak now that you help the gift to be developed stir up the gift in the name of Jesus then touch those who are sitting among the gifted that feel overlooked allow them to see the potential that is on the inside of them in the name of Jesus I speak a restoration of passion a restoration of passion in the name of Jesus that we have a stronger hunger a stronger thirst in the name of Jesus touch every city political officer in the name of Jesus place conviction in the hearts of every city police judges lawyers decision makers that they will make the right decisions that they will have conviction in their hearts to do the right thing in the name of Jesus we thank you so much for what you're going to do in our city on the habits God God, on the basis of our submission to you God we have faith in you God and we resist the devil and his work we resist all forces and powers of evil in the name of Jesus that have taken hold of our city we resist the spirit of wickedness that has established strongholds in our city and our region the dark places the hidden works of darkness the mystery places or where the enemy has set up camp we rebuke him now in the name of Jesus and we call on the name of the Lord Jesus uh, to destroy all spiritual strongholds uh, we proclaim this day for the city of Goldsboro and the city of Raleigh uh, is now under the power and the ownership of the Holy Spirit all of the spirits uh, are hereby given notice and evicted from their place uh, uh, where they were dwelling in the name of Jesus uh, and all power belongs to you uh, in the name of Jesus today God we stand uh, and we claim Isaiah 1 and 26 uh, that I will restore your judges as they were in the beginning uh, and your counselors as they were in the beginning uh, afterward you shall call be called the city of righteousness uh, a faithful city we claim this day uh, Matthew 16 uh, 18 and 19 uh, and I will also say unto you Peter upon this rock uh, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven that whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven now we pray that our city be reclaimed be restored be revived in the name of Jesus send revival and set us on the path of righteousness we pray that our borders be secured on this day in the name of Jesus we pray for sincere revival we pray for sincere revolution in the name of Jesus allow God apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers to be raised up in this day and in this time even amongst our young in the name of Jesus that will carry your vision forward that will institute revival in the land that will overthrow systems and bring revolution so that this nation shall follow your lead shall follow your voice in the name of Jesus now God we speak that you allow the church to be the voice of the city the church to be the voice of the community the church to be the conscience of America and this nation the, voice, the, the church to be the voice of the world in the name of Jesus when the world needs a place to go they turn to the church when the world needs an answer they turn to the church touch us now to carry forth your will touch us now to do as you've called us to do and we'll give your name praise we'll give your name glory and we reclaim our city now we reclaim our city now oh, let an outbreak of salvation hit the land we're ready for the harvest in the name of Jesus we're prepared to disciple now God we need you to draw because you said if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me so God draw now in the name of Jesus and we are ready to develop disciples hallelujah we're ready to train up evangelists to train up pastors to train up teachers to train up prophets and
and apostles in the name of Jesus that will carry out your will. We reclaim our city now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. DLCM, this is the perfect season to sow seed into good ground. Give your tithe and offering in this season and reap a plentiful harvest. Genesis 26 and 12 says, Then Isaac sowed into that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Sowing during hard times proves faith in God, faithfulness to your church. Cash app dollar sign DLCM1 or www.dlcm.org or you can mail in your seed. In addition, today is Father's Day and if you would like to bless our pastor with a Father's Day love gift or first fruit, you can do so via Cash App at dollar sign A. McNair Jr.